So I have been asked uh, to make a, a short video uh, about uh, how people with full-time jobs and limited time can still get this done. Is, it, is, is there still a way to get it done? And there is. Uh, there are effective learning strategies and there are ineffective learning strategies. And the best that I can do is tell you what does not work and what not to waste your time with and what does work. And uh, I think I've done a, I've been studying learning theory for a very long time. It's, it's the, the gist of most of the research that I do is in how, especially with the self-study and online work, is how do you get that same level of output without structure that you would get with structure, with somebody standing over your shoulder saying, come on, do this, do that. Well... Let's have a look at what we have here. This is the self-study learning process. And self-study means you're pretty much on your own, which is what you are in CFA. You're pretty much on your own. And there are three distinct steps that you have to go through. I don't, well, call them distinct steps. They're tasks in the learning process. They're not distinct, but they're tasks that you have to cover. There's the administrative task, reading, things like uh, reading, highlighting, note-taking. This is time-consuming and it's slow. Uh, the reason I say it's slow is, think about it this way. Um, if you could think a sentence and it could write itself, would you waste your time moving your hand across the page? No. If you're going to take notes, what's the slowest part of taking notes? Your hand moves slower than your brain. You know what you want to write down, but you got to wait for your hand to write it down. Your mind is three, four sentences ahead, and sometimes halfway through a point you go, well, hang on a second. What, what was I thinking again? What was that point I made? Oh, I said it's so great in my head, and where is it? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? If you could think the notes instead of write them, you'd do it yourself. Um, so that's the administrative stuff. Very time-consuming, very slow. Then there's the functional part of learning. Uh, and in the functional part of learning, believe it or not, this is not the most effective part of the learning process. Uh, this is the first step. It's a necessary step, but it's not the, 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 the most effective part. Functional learning will put things into short-term memory. Uh, functional learning is sense-making to understanding, where you're reading something and you're going, okay, well, hang on, what is it saying again? You're trying to make sense of what it says until uh, the point where you go, okay, okay, I get what it says. Now, that's just getting what it says. That's familiarization. You're familiar with what it says. Here's your learning. Reinforcement. This is problem solving and exercises. That moves things from short-term memory into long-term memory. A process called internalization. Only with internalization can you then reflect on your understanding and improve it. But if all you have is if you've moved from sense-making to understanding and you're familiar and you think you have it and you keep moving on and on and on, it doesn't go to long-term memory, you don't internalize it, you cannot reflect upon it and improve your understanding. The learning happens here in reinforcement. So, how do you get there? How do you get there faster? Because if you can get to reinforcement faster, you can cut your learning time dramatically. Well, look at this first part, this administrative stuff. That's got to go. Um, I'm going to highlight a, a, a research paper, the most recent research paper I can find on effective and ineffective study methods. And the reason I want to point out the most recent one is because whenever uh, academics write a research paper, what they do is they cite a whole bunch of the previous literature. So what you want to do is you want to find the most recent empirical paper, and in there you'll find all of the citations of the previous research that supports uh, um, what, this, uh, what, the, what the hypothesis and the theory is. So rather than looking in the literature for all the papers, you look for a recent one that's highly cited or, or, or fairly well cited, uh, and, and you look at the references to find all the previous research. <clears throat> um, this is a fairly common result that they have the three most ineffective methods of learning, the three most ineffective methods. And this is not just this study. That this, is, this is corroborated over many studies. Rereading. Uh, reading something a second time, ineffective, ineffective. Highlighting and underlining, ineffective. In fact, highlighting doesn't work, and highlighting actually lowers your retention. And here's why. It's because as you're highlighting something, you think, there I go, I've highlighted it, I'll come back and just read that. Why? You're there now. Read it now. What's the point of highlighting? doesn't work. Here's another reason why it doesn't work, is people who highlight very rarely go back and read their highlighting. It's a waste of time. Ah, it's a waste of time, and you're ruining a good book. And three, summarization. That means note-taking. Note-taking adds little value to the learning. 
That doesn't mean that you can't, you still have to make notes, you still need something to refer to because you don't want to reread, you'd rather read something shorter, but the act of actually taking the notes, of actually writing the notes, has little value in learning. Uh, if they're given to you, if you already have the summarizations, if you already have the notes given to you, uh, you lose nothing. People think that, no, no, if I make my own notes, I learn better. Well, research shows that, no, you don't. You think you do because your mind is sense-making and understanding concurrently with note-taking, but the note-taking itself does nothing for you. It adds no value, but the unfortunate thing is in the end, you kind of need some summaries to refer to. That is why I do the notes for you. I do all this administrative stuff for you. Uh, so I take all of this out of, uh, out of the picture. Here are the two most effective uh, learning methods uh, uh, that are used. Um, let me find the, uh, uh, the uh, thing here. Practice testing is the single most effective method because it's reinforcement. Practice testing. Let me read to you. According to the researchers, uh, the techniques have shown to boost students' performance across many different kinds of tests, and their effectiveness has been repeatedly demonstrated for students of all ages. Uh, and that is uh, practice testing. Uh, the other one uh, that, uh, that does very well is what's called distributed practice or distributed learning, and I'll explain what that is here. Uh, I have said that the best way to use my videos is like this. Half an hour with the videos, then hit the problems half an hour with the videos, then hit the problems. That's distributed practice. It's not power watching all the videos and then doing exercises till you're dead. It's distributing uh, uh, the, the practice of what you're doing. A little bit of functional learning, a lot of reinforcement. A little bit of functional learning, a lot of reinforcement. In fact, the ratio that you should be doing is this. Two, uh, sorry, two. One to two. For every one minute of functional learning, you should be doing two minutes of reinforcement. You spend half an hour watching videos, spend an hour on problem solving. Half an hour on the videos, an hour on problem solving. When you problem solve, when you do it in that ratio, there's no need to reread. There's no need to go back and, and, and do it again. You're putting it into long-term memory, you're internalizing it, and after a while you can reflect on your understanding and you'll find that your understanding improves even more and you'll gain even more internalization without having to do more problems. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't have the quote on the paper here for the distributed learning, but those are the two most powerful techniques. Here's what, uh, here's what I do for you so that you know. If you're working full-time, uh, what you want to do is you want to get to understanding as fast as you can and then to internalization. You want to move from understanding to internalization. How do you get to understanding without having to go through all of this stuff? Well, first of all, my video notes eliminate the need for all that. You need some summaries. You need notes to refer to. There's no question about that. But the actual making of the notes adds no value to the learning. So you may as well just have them given to you. Seven bucks. Save you a lot of time. This is time consuming and it's slow. It's slow. So I get rid. I basically move you all the way to here right away. Now, my videos will move you all the way to here. We'll get you past sense making, and here's why. I'm in the classroom teaching this stuff, so I see where students have a problem making sense of things. So I anticipate that in the videos that I do, and I break complex topics down. I try to use as many diagrams and arrows as I can so that abstract thinking becomes a little more complete, uh, concrete. I try to get you past all of that sense making so you don't have to stop and go, wait a minute, I don't understand this, and then have to go looking for a whole bunch of sources on the internet to try to figure out what's going on. Also, if you don't understand something, you throw a question on YouTube, I answer it. I am maybe not right away, but if I'm sitting here, I'll answer it right away or within five minutes. But if I'm out walking my dog, well, you'll wait an hour, right? But I try to get you all the way to this part. So all you have to do is the understanding, internalization, reflection. Understand, internalize, reflect. And you do power sets. Half an hour of, of, of video, hit the problems. When you do the problems and you go to the next half hour of video, you'll notice how, how much easier it is to understand. If you're on YouTube and you want to get through half an hour of video quicker, play the video at 1.5 times speed. Why? Because you already have the notes. What's slowing you down? 
not your brain. Your brain works faster than any processor out there. Your brain can make connections and, and, and pattern match better than any computer out there. B unbelievably fast. No computer is faster than the human brain. So what slows you down? All the administrative stuff. All the administrative stuff. Uh, if you have to read, you can only read so fast if you're reading for understanding. But if you have the notes in front of you and you're listening, you can go to 1.5 times speed. Suddenly, you're taking half an hour of listening time and you're compressing that into 20 minutes. Then hit the problems. Come back for 20 minutes, hit the problems. Come back for 20 minutes, hit the problems. You'll find that your speed of internalization increases dramatically. So, trust me on this. Rereading, highlighting, underlining, note taking on your own. It's not just me saying this. It is years and, and dozens of studies following students along that says, you know what? This stuff doesn't work. What does work? Problem solving and exercises and distributed learning. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's what works. So if you're working full time, take advantage of my videos. Level one is free. Level two, yeah, it's 17 bucks a month, but <laughs> look at what you're getting for 17. Look how much time I'm saving you and what's your alternative, right? And get the notes. Get the notes because they're already done for you. Yes, you're going to need notes to refer to. You can make your own, but I've already told you it's time consuming. It's slow. Your hand is far slower than your brain. What slows you down in learning is all of this stuff all the way up to sense making. Reading something going, what? I don't get that. And, and having to spend half an hour looking online for other sources till you finally go, okay, you know what? I give up. Forget it. I can't get that. Well, that's frustrating. That slows down learning. If I can get you to understanding, you can jump right into problems. The goal is to get you to reinforcement as fast as possible because that, that's where the learning happens. Uh, most people will spend about 40 to 50% of their time. If you're studying for an hour, 40 to 50% of that hour is spent doing this kind of stuff. Reading, highlighting, making a few notes, doing this, doing that. And, and uh, the problems are, are done at the end. And that's a fault of the book. The book always has the problems at the end of the chapter, almost signifying that it's, it's the least important part of the chapter, that we think as soon as we get to the summary, we're done and we don't have to do this. This is the most important part. But most people spend 40 to 50% of their time here. Believe it or not, the functional learning, that really only takes about 10% of your time. If you can get to understanding, that's about 10% of your time. So imagine if you could take this out of the way. Spend 10% of your time uh, actually uh, understanding things and spend the other 90% uh, in reinforcement and internalizing. Getting rid of this, so all of a sudden an hour is the same as somebody doing all this administrative stuff uh, and taking two and a half hours. So that's about the best that I have for you in bringing research into this, telling you what's effective, what's not effective. If you work full time, you need to work smart, not harder, but smarter. Uh, so don't waste your time on tasks that add no value to learning. Rereading, don't do it. Highlighting, underlining, don't do it. Summarizing, don't do it. Do lots of problems. Do move to understanding very quickly and oscillate between these two, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right, that's, that's the best I can do for you if you're working full time. I think, uh, I think that uh, uh, should help you out a lot.